Ever wonder what I do behind the scenes when it comes to creating worlds for platform masters? Well, I'll show you the process. A lot of it is kind of repetition, but there's also a lot of math involved, too. Hmm, math. Probably not your most favorite thing, eh? Well, for the most part, I'll just kind of skip over the rich details on the math, but at least explain the very basics. But this just gives you an idea on kind of what the how I design the worlds, in a semi-sense, anyway. This world you probably recognize if you saw that previous video, right? Well, there are a few changes that need to be done because, well, once, that be, by the, when I first made this world, the grass texture, well, I didn't have one. It was just a solid color. Now that I have it, things are a lot different. And I've noticed the grass texture is considerably darker. These need to be darkened. Hmm. But, I wanted to show you something else. If these layer names give any hint. Well, I'll show you the difference. Now, you might be noticing the sky looks a little different here. It looks a little on the darker side in here now. Well, this is what the old sky looked like. You can see the difference here, right? Hardly any change up here. Lots of change in here. So what's the difference? Well, I happen to have forgotten the square root in the formula. There's a sign involved with the formula, and then after the sign, I forgot to perform the square root in there, and then pretty much just go from there. That's where this gradient comes from. But, if you were to actually look at the other scenery, yeah, that's Z. Gotta love that control Z. It's so handy. I calling it I call that Zing it instead of undoing it. But you might notice that some of these layers just aren't visible. That's because they're temporary layers. Temporary. So why not delete them? Well, for example, I need to make these hills darker. Well, this is my base layer. All I need to do is just change the colors here, put this on here, and then merge them in so I get the final result. And by keeping these temporary layers, I don't lose my progress. So I can quickly redo it without any loss. Very handy. But you might be noticing with this number in the parentheses, that's the scaling. The lower that is, the closer an object is, and the faster it appears to move. But you might also be noticing here, sim fog. Now, what is that? Well, if you can tell by this almost next to nothing transparency, it's the fog. Well, but a long ways down, things are considerably different. Like here, 512. Wow, that's up there a lot. That's these that, it, that you can just barely see that seem to blend in really nice with the sky. Well, high fog. Lots and lots of distance. But let's get on with the basic procedure now. This is the resolution I use in my game, so that's what I need. I tend to reuse scenery in every single one of the worlds. That is, for example, World 10 scenery. I use that in World 11, uh, I think 14 as well. There's probably others, but. That just gives you the idea. In other words, I recycle scenery a lot. It reduces your download size and other stuff. And reduces the... Well, you get the point, right? But, I need a sky. Trouble is, Ronis, the city world, yes, it's now declassified. What sky does it use? Hmm, guess I'm gonna need this. My design document. Normally, this is classified, but I've declassified a lot of the stuff, as you can probably tell. Total secret? Hmm, my goodness, how secret can you get? This is a little less secret, but even then, you still have no idea what it might be. But it's a story-related object. Ain't giving away the story. World 1's name. Every single one of the 18 worlds has a name to it. But this is World 2 if that gives a hint. The, the top here is basically the 
world's name, and the first paragraph basically explains the level design. Nothing really special about that. And it's irrelevant. But it's the second paragraph and onward until before this that's mostly relevant in the designing of the actual scenery itself. And what would a city world be without traffic and traffic lights? Hmm, I'm stumped on that one. So, I'm going to... You probably remember that number in parentheses right from that image, right? Well, that's the scaling. I use that too. I go into such extreme detail explaining all these. And 150%. You might be wondering on that. Well, for some reason, if it's 100%, it's not actual size. As it is, because if, if I put a regular real sheet of paper over here, over my monitor, there's an obvious difference. So obvious, it's... But by using 150%, it's practically exact to the... I can't tell any difference. And with my 500 DPI vision throwing in, you know... Well, you get the point, right? I can read microprint, size one and a half. That's my real limit. But anyway, world number. That should be self-explanatory. Basic theme, city. Well, that's also self-explanatory. Introduced. That's what new gameplay elements are introduced in this particular world that were not present in previous worlds. Hmm, I don't wonder what this might be. Overworld directions. Well, when you're on the overworld on this particular world number, this is what each of the key directions relate to. My goodness, where's this guessing game at? I don't wonder what all of these are. But some of these are not as classified, though. Not as deeply. Overworld access. Complete world one. Well, now, in video games, how else are you supposed to access world two? without cheating. Clearing World 1. That is so obvious. Sky. Well, that's what kind of sky, the sky, type of sky that's used. It's either day, dusk, or, in one case, night. Hmm. Well, you got the point, right? So, let's get on with designing some worlds now. Why do I have two of these? That's odd. Oh, well, no problem. So, the design document told me I need a sky background. But, much below this, a little below this point starts classified stuff. Deleting. And yes, even the daytime sky has been changed in that same way. Because I forgot that square root. What am I naming it to? Day sky backdrop. Because it's basically the backdrop. It's essentially the very true background. But I use the background layer for other things, too. Like, for example, let's say I want to design some images. I like the dark background because you can see things a lot better. Very useful. It's also why my window style is like this, really dark. Trouble is, dark window style seems to lead to a lot of bugs that you otherwise never knew existed. Black text, dark gray background. Hmm, contrast problems. But there's more things I need to do. But there's a problem. What do I need in the background? So, reading through this... Hmm, traffic light, that's irrelevant for now. Because it's not created. Okay... Grassy area. Hmm, that's a clue. A cliff, two is just beyond, where below is a river. Okay, so it's grass all the way out to two. Guess I need to add that. Messing with this program, I like to get the 